Hello Titans, uh, this time we're going to be working in Photoshop, um, but before we do that I wanted to uh, find some images that we're going to use, probably pop culture references, um, some images that we're going to use as a reference. Uh, what we're going to make is kind of like uh, fan art in this case, and we're going to use Photoshop and mainly the text uh, abilities of Photoshop to do it. Okay, so I've filled my screen with a bunch of different examples um, of completed work, and I'm going to talk about each one very quickly. Um, what I like about this one is they use more than one word. Most of the text is actually readable. There's not so much overlapping. There's a little bit right here, but there's not so much overlapping that any of the text is unreadable. Um, which, And I'm pointing that out and specifying it because this could have been a much more successful one had you been able to um, read that text. So this is a would be a good one. We could still hopefully tell the shape is Peter Pan, um, which is great. But And she bent the text really well, the person who created it. But I just wish that more of the text was readable because we're losing the text in it. I also like that I noticed that she spent some detailing on the text, though, which is nice and not many people did it. Um, I like this one, except that I feel like it's a little bit too plain. This probably should have been um, filled in. Uh, but otherwise, it's a good, a pretty good example. This one's filled in, but again, the overlapping makes it difficult to read certain words. Um, we know obviously that all the words are Batman, but it would be cool if you can actually see that in the text. I feel like Kirby is a good example of that. He's one of the ones that's left. You could practically read every single, even though it's really small, you can read practically every Kirby on the screen. Um, this one was done by a former student, and uh, all of them were done by a former student. Um, but she decided to use her name to create One Direction, which I thought was an original idea. Um, and here we can see the Blues Clues dog, and most of the text is readable. I wish it was a little bit more filled in. There's a lot of white space on this. It could be a little bit better, but it's a good try. Um, Slipknot is a really good one, except that the text is just so boring. I wish that they used, uh, they took more time in the very beginning when they're picking out their text. Um, and that leaves us with Mikey, uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, who unfortunately has so much overlapping that we barely can tell its text anymore. But otherwise, uh, superb job. Alright, so that leaves Kirby, who I already talked about, and this Mario 1-Up Mushroom here. Uh, so if someone tells you to get a life, this is exactly what you would need. Anyway, um, what they did here that I liked is, first of all, they spent a lot of time making their letters look good from the beginning. Um, this really helps in the design of it. It gives it a lot of depth, um, and it's the first step. Um, this is a, a fairly great job. There is some overlapping here that makes it a little bit more difficult to read, but overall you can read most of them. Um, the letters are bent and transformed. Um, and the letters actually have details to them, which gives it a lot of depth. So the first thing we gonna look up is something graphic. For example, like cartoon characters are graphic characters. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Mickey Mouse. All right, and of course we're looking for images. All right, so graphic means that it's low in detail and it's low in, diff in uh, different colors. So we want something that fits that description. So for example, this probably isn't what we'd want. This has a lot going on in the image. There's a lot of detail. Um, this is much closer to what we want. And what might even be better is something like this um, because it's uh, a lot less detail. It doesn't have like the buttons and the shoes and you know the body parts. It just has a very graphic picture of Mickey Mouse. And this is very low color. Now, it's not terrible if you do something a little bit further, like maybe this has one extra color or something like that, but you do want something relatively graphic. And again, I'm using that word in this case to mean um, low amounts of detail and color. This is a real, I like this uh, new style of Mickey Mouse that they're coming out with more, re more recently. Very fun. All right, so anyway, um, of course you don't have to do Mickey Mouse. You're gonna do your fun SpongeBob and Family Guy and whatever other characters you want. Obviously remember that all pictures have to be appropriate. Now you don't have to choose a cartoon character. Other very um, graphic things include things like logos. So maybe you'd want to do the Batman logo or uh, a favorite fast food logo that you might have or a favorite website. Um, these are all good things uh, to choose. So that said, um, when you find an image that you want, like let's say I was to do um, 
uh, Batman logo, or actually I prefer Superman. Um, that's just my preference, though. You could do whichever kind of logo you want. Um, my only argument is Superman would kick Batman's butt in a fight. I'm gonna go open up Photoshop now. This is what I really should have you get used to. Once we're in Photoshop, um, obviously we go to File New, and as always, we're going to um, name it correctly. I'm naming it with my first name, my last initial, my grade, which in this case, since it's a seventh and eighth grade project, we'll go with seven, um, and uh, let's call it what I'm calling the project code, which is usually the project initials. This is image from text. Um, so that's the project code in this case. Uh, if you don't have these numbers set up as I do, change these three numbers to be what I have here. Press OK and you get your nice white sheet of paper. Okay, now we could drag this directly in here. Um, and I'm not going to get into why because I don't want to waste time, but that's the better way to do it rather than dragging on the desktop. Believe it or not, there's actually a difference. All right, so I'm going to minimize that. Um, I'm going to take my logo and I'm going to use my move tool. Um, Command D because I accidentally made a selection. I'm going to make my move tool, uh, move my uh, icon or my logo, and also I'm going to use Command T and the shift button to enlarge it into a full-size page and I want to keep it in proportion, which is why I'm holding down the shift button at the same time. That makes it so like I can't do something, I'm letting go of the shift button. So I can't do something like this, okay? We want it to be Command Z. We want it to be in proportion. When I'm done with my transformation, I press return. I have my own icon, so I'm gonna bring that up for you. Here it is. All right, so I have my icon on here, my Squirrel Man logo. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to my text and uh, just click it somewhere on the page. And I'm gonna make sure it's big enough for you to see. You know that you could change all these things up here. I guess that should be big enough for you to see. Uh, if I wanna change the color, I could do it here. Why don't I pick a red that's in my piece right there, press okay. And by the way, I just did that by opening this but using the eyedropper, which automatically shows up when I go to colors on my page, uh, press okay. And uh, now I wanna use something in here. I don't wanna stick on default. Most of you have Marriott Pro as your default text. Um, you don't want to choose that because, first of all, it's super boring. I want something that, if my uh, project is something that I consider fun, I want to pick something fun. To uh, type out first, so I'm typing in my word. And by the way, I have one R there on purpose, just so you know. That's the way I spell Squirrel Man. Uh, ask me for that story sometime if you care. All right, so um, the next thing I'm going to do now is I can highlight it, and now I can go through these different fonts and see different things that come up. Like, uh, I might have different fonts than you, by the way, because I've gone out of my way to add fonts. And I'll, I'll throw a tutorial up on that. If uh, anyone's interested, they could go watch it and see how to do it. I'm not going to explain it now. All right, so you find whatever font that you want. I'm actually going with Show Card Gothic. I already had it loaded up, so don't think I'm picking the fault. I'm actually picking something that I had planned. All right, so there it is. All right, so now I can use my Move tool to move it. Once we have our text, I actually want to take a second to um, make it look cooler than this because what's going to happen is ultimately we're going to make a lot of these texts but rather than going through the trouble of, tra of um, using layer styles or effects on each one we're going to do it on the first one and that way all the rest will automatically come out cool. So I'm going to my layer styles by double clicking the layer that I'm on in the blue space right here. Then I'm going to start adding effects to this or layer styles to it. I call them effects. but. All right, so for instance, if we want to add a stroke, we can go over and click the word stroke and then change the size, because that's pretty crazy. Uh, maybe one more. I can also use my um, my keys to put in a number. All right, that's pretty good. Um, that's looking good. So now I can go to uh, different things here and maybe add a gradient. That might look cool. Let me get rid of this little guy. Um, I can also... I could cancel out of it for just a sec, go over here and change my colors. So I have like maybe this gray right here. Um, and that'll also change the gradients I have available. So when I double click this, now when I go over to my gradients, uh, you can see that that's one of the choices. So that's kind of cool. So um, I'm also gonna add a stroke. Great. I can uh, use my number keys to change this if I want to. It's probably pretty good. I'm going to double click my layers again. I want to add a couple more. So um, that's kind of cool looking. That's really cool looking. So I played with my layer effects and you can see that I, uh, I'll show you what I added. Um, I added a stroke, which is, 
about three. By the way, you don't have to do any of the exact things I'm doing. In fact, if you want to play with the gradient overlays, I didn't really like what I ended up with with that. Satin is a cool thing to choose. You could do stuff with uh, the contour here. Um, glows if you want them, whatever. I drop, but I did a drop shadow and I did a bevel. So you could, uh, if you wanted to see exactly what I did, you certainly could. I'll show you all three of them. And then, um, you, but you could do whatever you want. And you just want your letters to be, first of all, readable, that's most important. And second of all, interesting and cool instead of flat and boring.